stage film and TV actor Nancy Robertson got the hiccups, it was a good day. And her hiccups is a fine and very funny TV show. One she stars in alongside her spouse, the special and very silly Canadian comedian Brent Butt. Hiccups kicked off its second season last week. Now remember, these are professional voice actors. We're trying not to be intimidated. I'd be more intimidated in a room full of pillow monkeys. Pillow monkeys? Yeah. Monkeys made out of pillows. Where have you been? Oh, dear. Take a look at that one. Looks like she spent the night in a barn. Lucky for you that this is a voice audition. Why? Well, because you got a big zit on your face. No, seriously. It's like a third eye. What's her problem? It's my pleasure to welcome Nancy Robertson and her alter ego, Millie Upton, to Studio 4 to tell us more. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Well, nice to see you because you parked Wanda. Wanda Dollard, she's uh, gone. Yeah, well, yes, for now. Sort of. She's sort in of. reruns. Yes. From Corner Gas Days. Yes. And now that Millie, she's kicking a bit of butt. She is. That's the thing. So that's to speak. She, yeah. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, she is, and she likes to. She likes to set people straight mm -hmm. because they ruined her good day. Well, now, how long were you living in Millie Upton's skin before it actually? Uh, popped up on TV? Not that long, actually. It kind of came about fairly quickly. It mm. was, uh, I mean, when we wrapped Corner Gas and literally came home in, uh, in September, it's three weeks later, two weeks later, we shot the pilot. So, uh, so it all happened pretty quickly. And when you say we, that would be uh, your spouse and collaborator, Brent Butt, mm -hmm. and you. Yeah. And uh, some of the crew from Corner Gas in the, in the background. Yeah. Mm, yeah, how much fun. Our DOP came out. Ken Krawcheck came out from uh, Saskatchewan to shoot it for us. Mm -hmm. David Story, who was executive producer of uh, Corner Gas alongside Brent and Virginia Thompson, he came on to Hiccups as an executive producer. So there was enough there to make the transition cozy, but also enough there to make it new and exciting. Tell me about Millie. I've seen her on the TV, and she seems fairly sane, and then she gets completely crazy little bit crazy. Well, sure, because she's never grown up. She's a kid inside. Uh, we still haven't figured out, I still haven't figured out why she's still, uh, you know, a child. I'm trying to figure out whether it was a nasty upbringing or a privileged upbringing. Mm -hmm. So she basically deals with things like a child. Like if something doesn't go her way, she'll deal with it. And then a second later, she's happy. So she just kind of, she's a little, has a little bit of ADD, I think. Uh, a little bit. Yeah. But when did the idea hit you about this show or hit him? Mr. Butt about this show. How did it come about? It hit him, and uh, and he was talking with David uh, Story, and then they came up with saying that maybe I should play the part, and uh, and then at that point I got to kind of put in, have a little creative input into it, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. So because you didn't in Corner Gas necessarily zero. at the beginning, yeah. because you didn't even know Brent Butt nope. at that time. No. Nope. I fell in love during the series. Yes. How does it feel different for you to work with somebody you've been married to as opposed to the last time you worked together and you didn't even know who he was? Well, you maybe knew who he was, but you didn't know that much about him. That's right. It's actually, I think it would be more difficult if you married somebody first mm. and then worked with him for the first time. Because I think that would be a real gear, gear shift. That could get nasty. That could get that nasty. Could get na but we know each other through working with each other, so mm -hmm. it's very natural. It's a very easy place to go. And this is our first project going in into it together. Sure. At, um, so it was kind of fun to have some input and. Well, and the point is, uh, you liked each other when you started working together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Mm. Yes. Uh, Brent was quoted as saying, "Hiccups is what happens when crazy meets incompetent." He says a lot of things. I know. Tell me about his role. He is a life coach who's not perfect. He is a very well-meaning gentleman who's mm -hmm. decided that this is his calling in life. He just doesn't know how to, you know, execute it very well. He's got a lovely marriage, a very supportive wife. That's not me. 
<laughs> on camera anyways in real right. life i am yeah. i hope uh so he's he's well-meaning um he's experimental and that's what millie likes about him because she went to a psychiatrist once and he smelled like pudding so she's completely <laughs> off them uh butterscotch so stan <laughs> is perfect for her mm -hmm. because he he cares he really does want to see some some, sec, some right. success with her but uh he just uh he's not really well equipped he went to uh, the smenderson night school annex i see to become a life so coach. he doesn't have a lot of credential no the, in the life coach world no uh, and, and millie she writes books children's books mm -hmm. fairly successful uh, called grumpaloo the grumpaloo the series Grumpaloos, yep they're kind of freaky looking things, but fun. Mm -hmm. They're very cheerful kind of little uh, uh, little books, but she's passive aggressive in them, which is great. Of course. And she writes them as if she was gonna be reading them. Not She doesn't put herself in the mind of a child because she already is a child. And when she goes from perfectly pleasant to crackers, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that sounds like a soap opera. It does. Maybe that's the next show. <laughs> Per perfectly pleasant to, to crackers. crackers. Uh, what triggers it? What, what, a hiccup of some sort. Uh, for instance, first show, which I saw after that hockey game that wasn't so good yes. on Monday. Yes. Uh, Millie had lost her voice. Yes. Well, she chose to lose her I voice. I mean, on purpose. Yes. Accidentally she, on purpose. Yes. Because she heard her voice. And then she realized it wasn't what she thought it was. You know, which I think is yeah. common for most mm -hmm. of us. You remember when answering machines first came out and you recorded your, your message? Yes. I remember recording it like 15 times going, no, that's not me. And then I just got exhausted and wore myself out and had to deal with it. So <laughs> this is kind of what she heard her voice because she wanted mm -hmm. an audition for the voice of her, her doll that was coming right. out. Right. And, uh, and then when she heard her voice, she decided she wasn't going to speak again. Or mm -hmm. if she was, it was going to be in a different voice. Mm -hmm. Very and affected. of course, her life coach tried to get her out of that, and the rest you'll have to watch mm -hmm. in a rerun, because that one's done. Right. What's coming up? Uh, I believe it's an episode called Jim Dandy, where she's uh, feeling a little logy, a little tired, so mm -hmm. she decides to work out. Stan is telling her to get some exercise. Because Millie has bags of money, she bought every equip piece of equipment there is, put it in her condo, and then decided to open up a, a gym for everybody in the condo and charge them. And uh, it doesn't go very well. So. Mm. Well, yeah, Millie's a, she could be a titch bipolar, a little oh, sure. manic. Oh, Maybe yeah. she goes off on these tangents. That's correct. But if she's medicated, then the show doesn't go on. Well, that's the thing. If she becomes uneccentric, That's the, right. show, the show doesn't go on. How did you begin in acting? Did you go to school? Did you play a part in grade five? How did it all begin for you? Well, it all kind of, well, I always knew what I wanted to do. I grew up in a very, very uh, uh, funny family. And, uh, and it's just, it was something like, it sounds so obnoxious. I always, I always knew what I wanted right. to do, but yeah, I did. It's a blessing. Yeah, and I, per, and I have no other skills, zero. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I knew what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to go about it, it because it's, you know, it doesn't have a huge success rate and uh, a lot of rejection. But I just started, I started training, uh, went to the arts club uh, training and then lived in Los Angeles for a while, trained down there, came back up and went to uh, the Peter Breck Academy of Acting. Peter Breck from Big Valley. Wow. Love him yeah. and his wife, Diane, and went there for years. And a lot of people I work with, uh, Gabrielle Miller, who uh, was in uh, Corner Gas with mm -hmm. me, she went to Peter Breck as well, and uh, and just started, then stepped away from it for a while because it seemed a bit intimidating, and then came back to it, and then just got into, just got an agent and started auditioning, and then doing theater sports, and doing fringe plays, mm -hmm. and then things just evolve. I think if you stay in it and keep at it, it eventually happens. Eventually, yeah. and you make millions of dollars. Oh, bajillions, bajillions of dollars. That's why you rolled up in the Bentley this morning. Well, I'm I assuming. didn't. Uh, the driver rolled me Oh, out. the driver rolled you, yes. of course. I <laughs> forgot you had a driver. <laughs> I, Meanwhile, I've got a van parked out there with a broken gas cap. Mm, perfect. <laughs> well, and you have so many fans, and I was reading that one day you were walking down the street, and I'm not sure if it was this series or Corner Gas, and a man came by and picked you up and kissed you on the top of the head, and kept walking? Well, he didn't pick me up, but he came oh. up. I was standing at a crosswalk. It was while Corner Gas was on. He came up and just put his arm around me and just squished me and gave me a, a, a big smack on the top of the head with his lips. And as I said, normally that I would find that a little unnerving, mm -hmm. but it was so kind. 
And then yes. he said something very nice and kept walking. And I was there with my family. And uh, it was a little bit of a, what do we do here? Mm -hmm. Should we intervene? Thank you. Yeah, but it was well, lovely. You know, I exaggerated a bit then. I was had uh, dinner with Ms. Vicki Gabbaro last night, and Vicky. I told her you were coming on the show. And I said, apparently, like, uh, sh she's so beloved by the fans because they think Wanda or they think Millie and or the Nancy and that a fan had picked you up and kissed you on the head and she said well we don't have to worry about that nobody can lift us oh. <laughs> <laughs> she did I said can I use it tomorrow and she said of course Mm -hmm. Now that she's okay, don't dare me, Fanny. I'll jump well, over I'm there. Well, I'm thinking. You look strong, girl. <laughs> we'll come back with Nancy Robertson.